Now we can have a bit better connection to our wiring. Yeah, it's, it's good. I don't think it's going to arc. It's so close together though. Okay, we're going to get ready for smushing. Call it smushing, smashing. You ready? See, I can't put these together. They're all lined. All right, there we go. Oh boy. It's okay. Once we get in there, it'll all hold its place because they're all even level wires. That doesn't look so gravy, does it? This guy doesn't look like it's smushing. It's more like it's more like smashing. <laughs> we want all the threads to kind of interwine each other. It's still not smashing. I mean, whatever, smushing, smashing. It's still not intertwining. How about that? That's what we want. We want to intertwine. When to tie evenly. See when it goes in like this? Alright, this is it. This is it. No going back. No going back. Please don't go back. It's look like it's trying to go back. Now this might require manual soldering, I don't know. Okay, but so far so good. Alright, we're intertwining this. I don't feel too confident about the, the little black one here. It needs to really come in. But I think it's okay. I think the intertwining is working. There we go. That's not bad. Looks pretty good. Might be even better than all the rest. Now, the secret is, can we possibly get this insulator over this hump of two wires? That's going to be a challenge. go let's do this oh look at that oh look at that oh yeah baby oh yeah come on come on don't break on me come on get to get that beat over okay it's coming let's push this other side oh, oh man come on there we go yes 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 bingo we got both of these in there and this is going to tighten this more to give us a little bit more leverage Okay, I think this is the point here where we fire it up. Fire it up or not fire it up. All right, so here we go. Let's fire it up as it is right now. I go after the bead first. You can see here, that's what I'm going after. This guy needs to melt me. There we go. Now, now he's melted on there. You can see here, splattered. Okay, now I can focus on all the rest of these extras. Seal this bad boy here. Seal all the rest of the other ones too. Again, a heat gun will be a little bit more lower temperature and a little bit more thorough. But we're going to work with what we have and we are already there. Not bad. Create a lot of burn sparks, but we did our best. Oh. <laughs> we don't want to burn the wire harness here. Okay, so now I'm going after this guy right here, the last in of it. Oh boy, it's hot, 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 hot. It's burning my finger. Not just the wire melting here, but it's really hot. I got burned this bead here. There we go, helping grip that guy. There we go, see there, helping grip. It's done. It is done. So how that, huh? And we can also check our contacts too to make sure they're good. Now a little burnt looking, but they're still awesome. And so that was it. We constructed there. Um, the red wire going to the black wire for positive. The, the black wire from our Beijing's going to the green wire for negative ground. And then the blue wire is going to a pickup wire from the stator as well as giving to the ignition coil wire that we initially tended. So now we don't have to actually join this no more. And we can seal this one back, the bullet connectors. We just pull the heat shrink back on it. And this will get, get back into his uh, boot. There you go, nicely. Heat shrink. 
There we go. Let me pull a little bit more. Heat shrink protects the insulation. And I think we already put some dielectric grease. You can see here a little bit of splatical of grease marks. There we go. So, and we got our gauge connector here. We're going to go and silicone that tip as well once we secure this one. I'm going to go and silicone and secure everything once everything actually is fixed. The reason why is you don't want to put silicone and start moving pieces like this around. Then it's not going to really concave the joints. So you can see here, I did a great job here putting the silicone here as well. You can't probably see it, but there you go from here, very, very top. Yeah, you can see that. That silicone there. That helps to hold that wire. That tape was just a little bit reinforcement that I can remove it afterwards. So I use a lot of silicone in certain areas of the plastic to secure it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks a little bit dark and weird looking. But for the most part, at least we can see our wire joints and, you know, it's kind of sealed in there. And then when we put a little tie strap, you know, we can make sure... You know, it's not the prettiest, I don't think. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not like what they describe it would be, but it did burn. But then again, I use, again, it was a lighter versus, um, you know, heat gun would probably be even a little more even there. But yeah, that's really tight in there. You know, one thing I regret is maybe I should have got a big fat, um, you know, tubing heat shrink. And that way I can cover it right now. But it's too late now because, you know, the, the wires are soldered. I have no way of joining it in. But that's about it. I mean, it looks good. I think it looks fair. Yeah, I mean, it's exposed it so you can actually see your contacts, see if they're pulled apart or anything like that. You can inspect them. Just like this wire right here. See right there, it's barely threading on. You can see there our ignition coil wire. Or is it our ignition coil wire, sorry. Yeah, our ignition coil wire, I mean our pulse stator wire. It's barely threading on and uh, joining with the white wire. But it's on there. It's much on there. Let's fire it up. Find out right now. I think our gas, yep, it's still aligned. Yep, horizontal, so that means it's still on. Our key, let's turn on the ignition. Kill switch is always on. Hit this. Your RPM, look at the RPM right away. It goes up. I'm not even raving it. So RPM making good contact. RPM drop. See? So now we got a reading on the RPM now through the ignition coil wire. That was it. If you have a built-in um, bunging with the ignition coil wire, make sure you tap the blue wire to your pickup wire in the stator, which is this black and white wire, which converts to this actual stator wire, which is blue and white, but same thing. Just remember, and then also tap it to your ignition wire that you actually took off from here. Or if you cut it off from the CDI, it's the same thing. It's going to be the same continuity. Uh, so that's it. That was it, how we kind of saw this in. I'm going to tie strap this, just like I'm going to plan to have this tie strap bend, bend it down when everything is all squared away. But this is still for tuning. This is going to hold up when, during a ride, so I'm not worried about it. But I will tie strap it for right now, so keep my brake cable from not flickering somewhere that might not show suit, maybe get caught. But I doubt it, though. So, Michael from NCY Store, I hope you guys enjoy this uh, segment of how to use uh, the heat shrink tube for the first time and also where to tap the correct wire to get your uh, ignition RPM wire working through the ignition coil wire, including the pickup wire.